paint cup. Right? <laughs> well, 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 well. And poof to you, man. Here we go, here we go. Thank you, man. Well, you know, Pink's you nice. <laughs> Cheers. Jay, just continue, just gonna get a stabbing shot. Okay. Do you think it's easy here on this Sure. When's the last time you've been back to England? About a month ago, I hated it. And how long were you there this the first time? About a month. A month of pure misery. Really? It's like one big village now, London. Mm -hmm. Did you do any of the club scenes when you were there? Oh. Oh. Yeah, oh. What clubs? Yeah. What's that new one? That new one at uh, Strange Arms. What is that? Oh, God, yeah, the palace. Yeah, I went there and I the did. Palace, what's that? Oh, it's that awful dump in Camden Town. Yeah, you know what it's like? Oh, right, the music machine that yeah. Rusty's converted? Yeah. It's, it reminded me, I thought, you know, I was looking for this club of essence. And then when I went there, it reminded me of Studio 54. I mean, oh, it's really? Same kind of bullshit. Yeah. Well, that's funny, because Rusty's very influenced by New York and New York, right? Yeah. Um, anyone who's got a book of matches that I can yeah, keep I hold of, so I can yeah. constantly light yeah. cigarettes what I want. Got a light, oh, great. Oh, great. All set? Okay, guys. Are you all quiet, please? Who's done with you? Fuck, I know that Will was white as death. That's all right. That's <laughs> why I make up. Even I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've had no time to do my hair. <laughs> Don't look at the TV on this, is right. <laughs> yes. Okay. You ready? We're rolling. <laughs> Let me know when you're finished, Jerry. <laughs> <coughs> you haven't done too many interviews in the last few years, and I'm kind of interested in knowing why you're choosing to kind of, in a way, come out now. Oh, next question. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't oh, I don't know. Lost interest, right? <coughs> <coughs> Media, as far as England went, mm -hmm. is slightly different. It's not as corrupt. What? America's not as corrupt, or England's not? In England, journalists see themselves as uh, gods. They cast their versions over everyone. And it's especially heavy in the music scene. Uh, I've noticed that myself over there. Why do you think they hold such sway in England as a... Is it because the radio situation is such a... Even though we have tight formats here in America, well, still England's you have... Well, a village. Have... It's like a, a tiny little village, and it behaves like that. A small, small town, community. Massive. But why would, say, this one particular faction of the media have so much power? I mean, rock and roll critics, whether we're talking I about... I don't know. New I music don't think they do have power. I think they have nothing. They Relatively. Just... Because we've had other artists that have told us, seriously, that they feel that an awful lot of people... In other words, you don't even have to get a radio airplay in England to sell a record if a critic says it's very good, it seemingly carries a lot more weight than it happens here. A, a kid or a young person can pick up a review here of a band, and they pretty much pay absolutely no attention at all mm. to what the critic has to say. If they decide they like mm. it, they like it. It's as simple as that. And they're going to have much more of a chance of hearing it. I realize it's tighter than it used to be, but more of a chance of hearing it on the radio here than certainly than they would on the BBC. Mm -hmm. I think there's only one channel over there yeah. for, for radio. You just finished a new album, and uh, could you tell us a little bit about that, its title, and, and how it differs, basically, from what you've done in the past? <laughs> Well, that's for the general public to decide. Well, how do you decide. feel? Your impressions of how it, how it differs, because everything has to be a progression, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm just happy to do it, right? That's all. You see, not having a test pressing to hear it, or anything to work with, you know, then I have to really rely totally on you to tell us you know, your impression. You didn't even ask for one. <laughs> I did. I, I, I bet you well, did, that's yeah. not true. I did ask for one, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Um, can you tell us the personnel and how that difference, who plays bass now? Uh, a well? guy called Peter Jones plays bass, who actually isn't here right this very minute. And Martin plays drums, and then there's us. And that's it. Can you compare it to the last ones? What, You can compare it to anything. Yeah, I guess you can. Yeah. Would you? 
Um, it's going to be better. In what way? Well, it's like um, it's one album more than we've done before. So it's got everything we've done on those last ones, plus us now. Well, what have you been listening to? I guess that's really what I'm trying to get at. And things that maybe have possibly influenced you, if it's not music itself, but experiences that you had. Mantovani. No, I don't buy that. <laughs> All right, don't. Because yeah. <laughs> because your record company is telling us that they find the, this record, and to use that uh, abhorrent term, but very commercial, much more. It's called Commercial the, Zone. That's the name of the album. Commercial Zone. Mm -hmm. Would you tend to think it's more commercial than the albums you've had? Oh, certainly. Well, no, not. there's like um, there's a couple of singles on it that we're going to release as singles as well. Um, they're commercial, so there's commercial music on it. Now, will you be touring to support this, this album? Mm -hmm. We're doing gigs. We're doing a series of gigs over the countryside. Yeah. In this country? In Great Britain as well? You're not, be, you're not helping maybe, me, John. We're not helping maybe, me. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you're not helping me at all, then, John. No, no but I mean, I wonder, are you going to do major venues, extensive tours, small tours? Kind of, um... We don't do tours. We just do gigs occasionally. Mm -hmm. Like once every two or three days. It's better that way. Same kind of thing as the last one, but better. Which was like two years ago. We did about eight gigs in a month. Mm -hmm. And like half the band left. But then, what, right. But if I remember that correctly, that you were doing basically major, major markets. And yeah, and we're doing that again. And yeah. hopefully more major and bigger. You know? I but mean, we're we, don't, we don't make records. We don't want to play to empty halls. To thing. hide. No, no, we I know. We want to flog as many as possible. But I realize that, but we're talking about in this country, seemingly, there's an awful lot of attention paid, and especially to Europeans coming to this country, to, uh, say, in cities in New York and Los Angeles, and there are great, great cities with an awful lot of people who like the kind of music and have liked you in the past, mm -hmm. uh, that never have the opportunity to see you. And so I was wondering if you were keeping those people in mind, people who may be in places like Tulsa, Oklahoma, or seriously. Well, Miami, Florida. Well, if Warner's Florida. had their way, they wouldn't have had an opportunity to get the record either. <laughs> you know about that? No. Oh, they boycotted us. I believe so someone got fired would... for like getting our record into the charts. But that must be come from the city officials, then. It certainly. Oh, come I don't from. know where it comes from. You know. You know, dare I mention Mo Austin or Bob Regeer? I mean, it might have had something to do with them. I don't know. You know, I'm not blaming it on someone else. Right? It, it, you know, it happened. It really happened. I know the guy who got fired for it. Really? Mm -hmm. Just thought I'd moan about that. <laughs> now, unless you were misquoted in New Musical Express, you know, where you... More than likely. Highly likely. <laughs> highly likely you were misquoted. And you can tell me that, uh, that what I read was that you <coughs> said that you missed performing, that you missed performing on stage. And if that's true... <coughs> I do, yeah. What yeah. is it that you miss about it? The attention. Well, after that acting lark, right, which I found to be really phony, it's just, well, a live thing might cheer me up a bit. Mm -hmm. What is it that you get from the audience when you're performing, John? Because I know you're giving up a lot of Feedback. Back. Back. Can you ex express how that feels to you personally when you're on stage? Brilliant. <laughs> now, you just said something about acting, because you just were in the film with Harvey Keitel as a fine mm -hmm. actor. Uh, how was that on stage? With, I mean, on, on the set, did that work really well with you? Bloody frightening. <laughs> I have a tendency, and I'm not sitting there trying to stroke you, but I have a tendency to feel that you would either be really terrible in front of the camera, <laughs> seriously, or, really or, good. or ex exceptionally good. Never you know? dull. Yeah, I go along with that, and I think I was brilliant. <laughs> Now, of course, the, your schedule had to be completely different than what you're used to. Don't they start oh, shooting about God, 6 o'clock in the morning? God, it was hell. Twelve and a half hours a day. It was agony, but I got to like it. Can you tell us a little bit about your part? No. Why? I don't want to. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's such a blatant film, right? I mean, if I say anything, I'd be giving the whole story away. I see. It's just about guilt. Best possible part he could have played. I think. <laughs> My guilt. Like, like the script was written for him before they knew him. It was great. I was asked to be a loony, so I was <laughs> a loony. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Do you think you'll act again? I've always acted. No, I mean in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that again or you will send me up with that. I'm, I'm acting now. In a proper film. I, I figure you possibly are, but see, so am I. <laughs> I'm um, not. <laughs> we play the PIL video here. Uh, mm. And I was wondering if you're interested in in video as a medium, you'll be going into that a little more extensively. Uh, I think it's a great medium, misused but great. Um, lost interest in it. Have you? Yeah, definitely. 
I mean, still into promo, you know, video for promoting singles and stuff really works, but video as like the new thing that was going to really happen and kind of change everything that was going on didn't happen. Yeah, okay. it, it's still band format. Usual thing, restricted by uh, Well, you concept. only have to watch MTV for eight hours on the trot. Yeah. To realise where video's going. Yes, but that's not us. You know, we don't make. No, it. I know. Sure You're controlled by the nothing. product that's sent in. Mm, yeah, no, we just—it's a whole different thing. It's like a record, and either we have nothing to do if we—if we were a radio station and we choose to play your record, we certainly don't have anything to do with what's on the record, with just whether or not the public likes it or not. That's all. Oh, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. Because now, if we made the videos, that would be a completely different subject. But uh, but we certainly don't. So I can't tell radio. So like MTV is like open to alternative programming. I think possibly more than any uh, radio station that's in the country right now, or certainly any major radio station that's in the country right now. We, we certainly play more new music than just about anyone else that I can. Think but I mean, of. this like this music thing, right? Music isn't like the only thing, you know. Like MTV being, or supposedly being like the hippest channel. Mm, but then we didn't we didn't give ourselves that that. Uh, that title. Basically, yeah, but all that's, all it's, that's what channel. it's set up to be. Right? No, we're, we're basically set up right. to be a rock and roll channel. That's all. It's a music channel. And that's it. I mean, so you're we're not set up to be an, a, 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 an alternative channel per se, political and everything else, then that's a whole other game and you would be absolutely right. But that's not what it is. So we don't really get into that. You know, that's, and I'm not saying if it was my channel, I wouldn't do it differently. Uh -huh. I'm just saying that that is what MTV is. Damn, we're going to have to get ourselves our own channel. Yeah. Yes, well, we, that's what, when you we moved to New York. We had high hopes. Well, that's what we were wondering. In a way, that leads to the next question. When you moved to New York, we had understood that you were coming, you had all these different projects set up to do these different things, and I was wondering yeah, what has come into time. fruition. It, it takes, takes time. time. We dropped, you know, like, we, we can, like, dump stuff before we do it when we change our minds. And that, that happened a lot. Now, could you tell us about, like, like PEP? You know, could you tell us about that's like our, our like um, new record label, mm -hmm. and it's for the American territory. Um, what do you want me to tell you about it? Why? Well, why, why, it's why it exists? In other words, uh, if can, you know, you're, you're you're being distributed by Stiff. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you need your own record company? Why? What is it you want that um, company to do for you and for anything that you? I guess because we figure we know um, best what the record company should do, mm -hmm. and like as we can persuade the record companies to do that. We became one ourselves, and now we're doing it for ourselves. Um, and rather than give you a list of all the things we're going to do, or all the things that's wrong with all the other record companies that are plummeting, um, just see what happens. That's right. You learn the best way to get anything done is to do it yourself, and not rely on a record company to do it for you, because they usually don't. Mm. Well, I totally agree with that. I think that's a good policy at any time, but I think what I'm trying to get to is what is it that you're doing? You've been well, in New York for about a year now? How yeah. long have you been here? About a year now. Yeah. And like I said, we were waiting. You know, a lot of people well, were very uh, interested in You're forgetting my vacation. <laughs> Which has been nine <laughs> Which months. Which was long it. overdue. <laughs> but we were waiting for some sort of product to come well, out. Well, we've been here. putting a lot of corporate stuff together. Okay. It's like an expansion of the original pill idea. Which was just basically no producers, no middlemen, no managers. Okay, so if you're going to manage your own affairs, might as well do it properly. And you can't just go, all right, we've got a record company now, power, next album. You know, it takes time. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been doing. How about the other projects? Because I didn't think that you had really come to New York just to set up your own record company. I kind of felt that uh, you were interested in all facets of the media, and just as you were very critical, and, and rightfully so, in what you just said, it takes people who have vision, but also who have enthusiasm and energy to get things done. I mean, we can all sit back and say, this is wrong. You know, and I'd like I'd do it differently. Yeah, but the but idea to get is our foot in the door, it's much easier to do that in America. Mm -hmm. You can't really do anything in England. It's just too small. Mm. There seems to be like, uh, I mean, the mentality in England isn't open to um, anything positive, anything creative, anyway. When really anything is <laughs> not open to anything. That's how I feel. Um, unless you're in a certain mode, I'd call it the BBC mode. You know, mm. and the people who got away with the most really were people like John Cleves. Mm. I can't think of any other examples. Does that um, in any way have anything to do with the class structure that still prevails in England at all? I guess it does have something to do with it, yeah. I guess mm -hmm. it does, yeah. Is it bigotry or something? <laughs> I can't work it out. Are there Loads any, of things. <laughs> are there any projects that uh, PIO is doing <coughs> near completion? Something that you wouldn't mind talking about?